So today I'll be talking to you about the work we've done on source characterization and emission indices estimation using hyperlocal measurements from a local sensor network for, in this case, London Heathrow Airport. There are four main parts to my talk. Uh, briefly, I'll talk about um, the Heathrow deployment itself, then I'll touch on source attribution, then I'll quickly take a look at the scale separation and emission sources, and finally, we'll look at some modal calculations. So this slide summarized the sensor network deployment at London Heathrow in 2012 that lasted for a year, and, uh, over a an year, and in that uh, deployment, we're making measurements of several gas species and also uh, PM and including meteorological data all at high resolution. So the take home message here is that we have a very dense sensor network of fossil of sophisticated ports measuring multiple species at very high temporal resolution. Uh, in order to be able to make any meaningful interpretation of the data coming from the, this sensor network, we have to be able to demonstrate that these sensors are actually performing well in the field. And what you have here is the NOx and CO2 uh, performance of the SNAC or local sensor relative to reference instrument. And the take-home message here is that you have a very good agreement between the reference instrumentation and the local sensor with an R square greater than 0.9 and gradient greater than 0.9 as well. Um, so this panel is showing us the information content you can get from the sensor network, having a very dense sensor network. And um, when you actually look at information on different time windows, um, so we have one month, one week and 24 hour window uh, representing different species, CO, CO2, NO, NO and OX. And when you look at the the information on the one month window, you can actually start seeing evidence of long range transport and emission enhancements um, across the whole network, which is linked to meteorological changes. So you can see this uh, enhancement here in CO and the same in CO2 and NOx. On the, on the one week um, time window, uh, the, you distinct the ANA profile um, becomes more evident, and this is linked to the way. Uh, the emissions are, or it's characteristic of the emission within the airport itself. And when you delve into the 24-hour window, we start seeing um, the distinct operational mode uh, within the airport itself, where we are seeing this very low quiet period in between the zero, 0 hours to 600 hours across all the measuring network sites. And from 600 hours onward, you see this increase in activities uh, linked to uh, the, the use of the airport itself up to around 200 hours. So another way of looking at the information content from this network is to couple the concentration measurement as a function of wind speed and wind direction. And that's what we've done here for all the different receptor points. And by doing that combination, we can begin to identify unique emission patterns uh, linked to airport operation. Uh, I think a good example is this end of the runway here, where you have these two emission patterns that are mirror image of each other, which is linked to the emission coming from the runway itself here. So in the previous slide, we looked at um, the spatial pattern for one species for all the different receptor points. But now let's just delve into just one site and do the same analysis now for all the gas and the PM measurements. And what you begin to see by doing this now, you can actually start seeing this distinct um, emission profile uh, coming out, uh, information coming out for both the gas and the PM. So you're seeing uh, these uh, two blobs of mode uh, in, in both the gas and the PM. And when you delve into that in more detail, so what you have is um, you have regions of high NOx with high CO2 and moderate CO, and also regions of <coughs> uh, medium NOx with medium CO and CO2. And these are linked to, um, in this case, um, takeoffs and taxi respectively, especially when you look at where that sensor is located because it's located at the end of um, the runway. And we I also see similar bifurcation also in the PM. So these are consistent um, across both the gas and the PM measurements. And that's very important that we try and see if we can actually interpret that further in the next slide. So we've delving further into the source apportionment by now looking at just one species, and in this case CO, and look at how the Diana profiles changes as a function of wind direction. So and this is done by using the cluster analysis 
And the take-home message is that the analysis identified three main clusters. Two of them that we think are linked to the airport activities, in this case, um, the cluster one, which has a profile consistent with the operational, uh, the way the airport is operated with low concentration in the early hours and high concentration throughout the rest of the day, and the same for cluster four. But interestingly, for this particular receptor point, we saw the, the analysis also identified on that cluster to the west, which has a very distinct, unique um, profile. And that's interesting because we've now delved into um, looking at um, the Dana profile, in this case for CU again, but now we've looked at roadside CU from Cambridge, is about 100 kilometers away from Heathrow Airport. And we're seeing similar profile as what we've seen for the fifth plus identified for this particular point. And that kind of profile is consistent for roadside. And when you now look at the look, actual location of that sensor, you can actually see there's a road to the west of that, and that cluster has been identified as contribution coming from that road. So we've managed to disentangle the different contribution from the uh, different emission sources within the airport itself. Bear in mind, each of these clusters have been normalized to the mean value, so that's why the axis is uh, non-dimensional. So what you can do with high dense, temporarily high resolution sensor network data is that you can begin to disentangle the signals that you measure at each reception point. And this slide is just trying to talk you through how we've done that. So what we've done, if we've taken one species, in this case CO2, from two sites, uh, a very polluted and low polluted site, and we've tried to separate the contributions coming from non-local sources, which is represented in black here. And uh, what you can do is that once you've taken out that signal across all the sensor measurements, you get the residual, which is represented here for these two sites. And this fraction is what we call the local fraction. And what I've done is also highlighted the range of the measurements here, just to give you a context of the value. And you can actually do that for all the species. So once you've done it for CO2, you can do it for other species. And that's important when we start looking at the emission indices. So once you've disaggregated that signal, you can begin to look at how the pattern uh, of the local and non-local fraction look like relative to uh, the emission happening in their vicinity. And what we've done here is just to take two receptor points um, here at the end of the runway, and, you can, and the patterns begin to emerge. And here what you're seeing, the bottom line is you're seeing a mirror image as expected there. And um, some of those fractions are coming from taxi and takeoff, like we've um, previously uh, uh, talked about. And when you look at uh, the profile of the non-local signal, that's quite different from, uh, as expected, from the local fractions. And here we have actually combined uh, the large-scale meteorology uh, from London Heathrow Airport itself with the non-local signal. And what you begin to see is that you're seeing and a large fraction of elevated non-local signal, uh, um, which is linked to long range transport coming from the east to northeast the direction. So now let's delve more detail into the non-local signal, and particularly let's look at NO2. So we've managed to identify an elevated non-local NO2 in the east northeast direction, and when you look at the site of London Heathrow to the East northeast of London Heathrow Airport is central London. So this elevated non-local fraction is it potentially coming from road traffic source? In order to address um, the question, if this elevated non-local fraction NO2 signal is linked to road traffic, we've looked at the Diana profile of um, the NO2. And what we see here is that we are seeing a kind of profile consistent with road traffic related uh, mission source, which is telling us that what we had identified as a non-local directional easterly, not easterly signal is actually coming from a road source, in this case, central London. And we can actually also compare the magnitude of this um, non-local signal over this five week window we're looking at here. And that's almost a, uh, around 32 micrograms per cubic meter. And when you compare that to um, the local fraction from one receptor point, in this case, uh, site 30, which is at the end of the runway, um, it's almost about double um, the value of that. And 
So this is very important because you know you, again it allows you to quantify the magnitude of contribution emanating from local emission and non-local emission. So this slide shows the model performance against observation. This is exemplified by looking at slide 29 here. The model does a good job in capturing the emission pattern evident in the scatter plot and also in the estimation of emission indices as shown in the table here, reproducing the varying emission indices at different sites for the different species. So having validated the ADMS airport model, um, so we're now trying to see how we can exploit this very um, um, sophisticated model in looking at the impact of air quality within the airport itself and future changes with, uh, with respect to hydro. So what you have here is the annual mean contour map for NO2 in units of concentration, the left node panel. And on the right hand panel here is just the same annual mean concentration, but only for the contribution due to the airport itself, both tra traffic related to airports. And what you can see here is that uh, we uh, within the vicinity of the airport itself, about 30 to 36 percent of the annual mean and to concentration is coming from the airport related activities, um, showing that the most dominant activity is still road. Uh, so now let's look at the impact of future developments at London Heathrow Airport of, uh, and the impact that would have on air quality, especially with the potential addition of a third runway. So and this is represented by the contour map in, um, in, in the red box here. So if you look at uh, the map um, D, uh, that's the difference between the annual mean NO2 projection for 2030 and equivalent for 2012. And that difference is giving us um, around 20 microgram per cubic meter contribution in the vicinity of um, heat airport due to the addition of the third runway. And um, on that time scale, uh, we expect um, uh, to have a much cleaner vehicle fleet by 2030, meaning that uh, the contribution from road sources would be far, far less than 20 microgram. And invariably, um, you would not exceed the 40 microgram limit by 2030 due to London Heathrow Airport itself because of the smaller uh, road traffic contribution. So the addition of a third run would, would not, in a way, be a source of uh, problem related to air quality in the vicinity of um, Heathrow Airport based on these projections. So we've um, been able to show that local sensors and sensor network are viable for air quality monitoring for both gases and PM. Um, by making high temporal and high density sensor network, we can actually do scale separation and do source attribution studies. And one novelty in what we've done is by including CO2, we can actually now start begin to do direct measurement of emission indices, while the model um, gives us a very good predictive capability for uh, air quality. And the final point I'd like to make is that um, the, the work we've done and the uh, information we are putting out from this um, kind of analysis has a big implication on policy and intervention. Because by looking at very local signal, you can have very targeted um, policies that affects or affects changes in local emission. And this is very key to us being able to address the problem of air quality. And thank you. So I would like to thank you for your attention and I would like to acknowledge um, the different partners that contributed to this work and um, the head of my group, Rod Jones. Um, thank you for your attention.